वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अल्फ्रेड लॉर्ड टेनिसन पोएम यूलिसीज लॉर्ड टेनिसन इज ए विक्टोरियन पोएट एज आई टोल्ड यू इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर दिस पोएम एज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ ए मोनोलॉग मोनोलॉग मीन्स मोनो मीन्स सिंगल लॉग मीन्स अ स्पीच और अ नेरेटिव और अ डायलॉग सो ओवरऑल इफ वी टॉक अबाउट मोनोलॉग मोनोलॉग इज अ काइंड ऑफ ए स्पीच दैट इज डिलीवर्ड बाई वन पर्सन here uh, the particular poem ulysses uh, here a uh, speaker is there ulysses and the entire poem is narrated by him ulysses uh, was the king of ithaca he was one of the most able generals in the trojan war which lasted for almost 10 years and uh, he spent another 10 years to travel home because he was waylaid by several difficulties and adventures having experienced these difficulties and having overcome them with the courage and determination the inactivity of his peaceful existence at home tires him and makes him long for excitement so let us come up with the poem the text of the poem it little profits that an idle king by this lit still he earth among these barren cracks messed with an aged wife i mate and dole an equal lodge unto a savage race that hoard and sleep and feed and know not me so the first line it little profits it here refers to if he stage back he if he stage back in ithaca so he is saying that if he stage back what will happen it is of no use it little profits it is not going to give me any kind of profit that an idle king idle king means uh, idle king here refers to himself because he is the king of ithaca he is saying that if i stay back in ithaca it means i will do nothing i will become idle i will have no work to do as such by this still heard still means which is calm and quiet heard the fireplace in the house where um, the cooking uh, is taking place so he is saying that by this still heard if we stage back at home still heard here refers to the domestic periphery of the house among these barren cracks barren cracks wild rocks of ithaca his island kingdom barren which is unproductive unfertile so he is saying that it is not going to give me it is not going to uh, add anything into my career if i stay back in ithaca messed with an aged wife messed with uh, uh, messed with here refers to uh, like uh, he joined to he is uh, uh you see he has got married to an aged wife a wife who is much more elder than himself her um, his wife is penelope he here he is referring to penelope his wife i mate and dole an equal lodge unto a savage race mate and dole means mate means major and dole uh, to deal with or uh, giving justice to the people after minute care unequal lodge unequal lodge means uh, unfair and imperfect lodge unto a savage race savage means uncultured wild people of ithaca that hoard and sleep and feed and know not me that hoard hoard means accumulate accumulation of what accumulation of wealth hoard and sleep and feed live like simple animals simple animals are doing what they are eating sleeping and saving money and they are thus they are spending their life so they have little capacity for understanding this spirit of mind which is adventurous so here in these lines the uh, uh, the writer has reflected the pain of ulysses after he comes back to ithaca what kind of feeling he is having he says that king ulysses says that he finds little delight and profit as an idol king ruling over his people he can only give his uncivilized and barbarous people who are uncivilized and uncultured savage people unfair and imperfect lodge 
his people do not know him much as he has been absent from his kingdom for a pretty long time his people have no higher ideals or ideals of life and government so here he is saying that if he is staying back in ithaka it is not going to serve him any purpose he is saying that these people amongst whom he is uh, ready to stay these people are uh, uh, you see they spend their lives in satisfying the material needs of their lives they hoard wealth they accumulate wealth they spend their time in eating drinking and sleeping thus they are very much lazy in their life so let us come to the next lines i cannot rest from travel i will drink life to the leech all times i have enjoyed greatly have suffered greatly both with those that loved me and alone on shore and when through scudding drifts the rainy hates vexed the dim sea i am become a name so i cannot rest from travel he is saying that i don't want to rest and live a life of idleness laziness i cannot rest from travel i will drink life to the leech drinking life to the leech means enjoy all its experiences to the brim leech means uh, the last drops so i will drink life to the leech all times i have enjoyed all times all periods of my life i have enjoyed life to the least all times i have enjoyed greatly have suffered greatly enjoyed he has enjoyed his life very much and suffered greatly have borne the sorrows and sufferings of life as well so he has both the experiences he has tears in his life he has tears in his life both with those that loved me and alone he had spent his life in the company of those who were very much dear to him and also he remained isolated on the shores we can say on shore and when through scudding drifts the rainy hates scudding flying quickly before the wind drifts broken clouds hates a group of seven stars which were called the rainers because their rise and setting but believed to be accompanied with showers of rain through scudding drifts the rainy hates vexed the dim sea i am become a name vexed means agitated with stormy showers dim sea on account of the falling shower i am become a name a name i am i am i have become very famous for always roaming with a hungry heart roaming wandering with a hungry heart with a deep craving for knowledge and and fresh experience so here the writer says that ulysses finds that he cannot live a lazy life at home i cannot rest from travel i cannot uh, uh, you see uh, bar myself from going out to the adventurous life he decides to set out on fresh adventure he wants to explore new fields of knowledge he wants to visit new islands and he wants to meet various new people he wants to enjoy life to the utmost i cannot rest from travel i will drink life to the leech he wants to do all that he can to satisfy his thirst for knowledge all times i have enjoyed greatly have suffered greatly in this context he recalls his past life he has a record of brilliant activities to his credit in the past he has suffered greatly he has also seen great times he has experienced hardships sometimes in the company of devoted friends and sometimes all alone all times i have i have enjoyed greatly have suffered greatly both with those that loved me and alone on shore and when through scudding drifts the rainy hates he has experienced hardships sometimes in the company of devoted friends and sometimes all alone he has had many adventures on land and on the sea on shore here refers to the sea he never felt frightened even when broken clouds flew rapidly before a strong wind and the hates or a group of stars known as the rainers threatened heavy rains so here the reference is that when he was returning back 
after the Trojan War, he was waylaid. He had various difficulties. He was left on an island which was uninhabited by the people and he was not aware of what life he is going to have, whether he will survive or not. So, he never cared for the weather, whether good or bad. He never allowed his adventurous activities to stop because of any danger or difficulty. I am become a name. He says he is known in almost all countries because he has travelled a lot. In various countries he has travelled for always roaming with a hungry heart. Much have I seen and known. He has won a worldwide fame because he has visited many parts of the world with the object of having the pleasure of adventure and gaining knowledge and experience. He has acquired wide experience. He has come across persons of different cultures and manners, climate and conditions of life. Much have I seen and known cities of men and manners, climates, councils, governments. So he has been to various cultures. He has come across various manners, climates, conditions of life. He has visited councils and government of various countries. Myself not least, but honored of them all, and drunk delight of battle with my peers. He has played an important part in all that he has seen, whether it is the manners of different cultures or manners of different people, climates, councils, governments. He has enjoyed everything. Wherever he has gone, he has been honored and welcomed by the people. Myself not least, but honored of them all. He has been welcomed and honored by all the people of all the countries wherever he has been. And drunk delight of battle with my peers. He has taken part in the Trojan War. He did wonderful feats on the battlefield. He fought with opponents who were equally masked. And drunk delight of battle with my peers. Ulysses feels delight in recalling his experiences in the Trojan War, which lasted almost for 10 years. The battlefield were full of the din of clashing weapons. Strong winds blew there. Far on the ringing plains of Windy, Troy. So here he is referring to the Trojan War, which happened. And he has participated in this war along with his compeers, his companions, his fellow people. So he is recalling that time. Again he says, I am a part of all that I have met. Yet all experience is an arc where through gleams that untraveled world whose margin fades forever and forever when I move. So here the writer says, I am a part of all that I have met. What I am now is the result of all the various experiences through which I have passed. I am a part of all that I have met means I have come across various things, various cultures, various people, various manners, various councils and governments. So these have now been a part and partial of my life. I have various experiences of life. Yet all experience is an arc where through gleams that untraveled world. Yet all experience, however considerable her, his experience may be, an arc, it is an arced gateway. It is just like an arced gateway. Where through? Through which? Gleams. Gleams means shines. That untraveled world. So, he is saying that whatever he is coming across, whatever he is uh, coming to know about, he had, it has uh, made him much more curious to know about various other things which are no, so far not experienced by him. Forever and forever when I move. Margin fades. Margin fades means boundary line. It uh, recedes. So he is saying that uh, uh, the more he experiences the new things, the more he wants to move further. So he says, 
and here he expresses his longing for knowledge and passion. He has acquired a wide outlook. He says that he has become a part of all that he has seen and experienced during his travels. His experience has formed his character. He has acquired a wider outlook. He has developed an unending desire to acquire newer and newer knowledge. He is not satisfied only with what he has seen and experienced. His experience and knowledge only opens to his view an infinite region of knowledge. Knowledge is an arced gateway through which a man sees that he has not seen Ulysses. He has not seen. Means whatever is not seen by you, you can see through uh, uh, see it through the eyes of knowledge. Ulysses wants to approach those regions which he has not travelled so far. He tries to reach there, but the boundary line of the unknown recedes from him far into distance. Forever and forever, when I move, how dull it is to pause, to make an end, to rust unburnished, not to shine in huge. So here again, he compares himself to a sword which remains at a particular place and which is not, uh, you see, shined, which uh, gets rust by the time. So he's saying that how dull it is to pause. Dull means uninteresting, boring, to pause. To pause means to come to a stop, halt, to make an end, means to come to a point in a work after which you will become idle. This is the end point, you say. This is the last point you have reached. To rust unburnished. To rust like an unused sword. Not in shine in huge, which is not no longer in huge. So here he is saying that according, uh, or we can say, uh, according to Ulysses, activity means life and inactivity means death. He has uh, developed an inner desire to gain more and more knowledge. His thirst for new knowledge remains unquenched. unquenched. So he says that... Uh, he wants a life of activity. There is no sense in idling away life. The sword gets rusty if it is not used. So long as it is in use, it always shines. Shines. So again he says, As though to breathe, were life as though to breathe were life means uh, he says that uh, just as the man becomes useless and dull if he gives up activity so also when uh, he says that mere breathing is not life life is something more than that a man should try to enrich his knowledge and experience and should be engaged in the task up to the end of his life. So mere breathing is not life as such. He is saying as though to breathe were life. The other people, the normal people, they think that if they are breathing, this is this this means that they are living. But this is no life as such for Ulysses. Until or unless he is acquiring more and more knowledge. It is not life for him. Again he says... Life piled on life were all too little. End of one to me, little remains, but every hour is saved. From that eternal silence, something more. So again he says that life piled on life. Pile means heap. Life piled on life means several lives that are put together. A particular heap is formed out of various lives he has lived. Life piled on life were all too little. All too little, all these lives added together will be insufficient for him. Such kind of quench or thirst for quest he has. Were all too little and of one to me little remains. 
of one to me i have been given one life only and not a combination of many little remains only a few years of this life of this short life i am given to lead only a few years are remaining now but every hour is saved from that eternal silence something more every hour every hour is spent in acquiring knowledge eternal silence means that it is said that after death no one speaks so it is the eternal silence eternal means ever existing we can say everlasting something that is it is something more than that because it brings us new knowledge from that eternal silence something more a bringer of new things and while it were for some three sons to store and hold myself while base mean we can say cheaper three sons three years to store keep safely store and hold myself just keep my body alive and allow the spirit to rust unburnished by avoiding dangers and risks so here the writer says that a single life is quite insufficient to acquire full knowledge and experiences of the world life piled on life were all too little he knows that the sea of knowledge and experiences unbounded and even successions of lives would be quite insufficient to acquire complete knowledge and experience and of one to me he says that only a single life is given to me little remains that he has grown old only a few years of his life are left at his disposal but every hour is saved from that eternal silence he says that he is going to die soon and before that only a few hours few years of his life are left with him he don't want to slip that time in idleness he wants to make the best use of every moment he is given he is however not afraid of death from that eternal silence something more a bringer of new things and while it were for some three sons to store and hold myself he wants that every hour is much to be done in life he wants that every hour is snatched from death should we engaged in acquiring new things there is much in his life to be done so if he is spending his life in idle things in material things it means he is doing wrong to himself and to others as well because these lives he might have spent in acquiring more and more knowledge he does not find any comfort in staying at home and holding material things because his spirit is yet very anxious to move for some three sons to store and hold myself and this gray spirit yearning in desire though he is grown old yet he is anxious to move to acquire more knowledge in spite of his old age ulysses eagerly desires to gain new experiences of life such as no human being has ever attained knowledge is compared here to a star which sinks below the horizon to appear again in another world so and this gray spirit yearning in desire he is having gray desire gray hair refers to his gray hair it means he is growing old but still his spirit of desire or his desire for new learning is not spent to follow knowledge he still wants to follow knowledge like a sinking star beyond the utmost bound of human thought so he is comparing himself to a star which is sinking his life is about to sink he is about to die he says that knowledge is just like a star which sinks below the horizon to appear again in another world ulysses desires to go beyond the utmost limit of knowledge and experience that has been attained by mankind he says that his material life his physical world is just like a sinking star he is sinking he is about to die but still more things are remaining if we see that a star which is about to die which is about to sink it it shines much brighter than it used to be so he says that whatever little life he is left with he wants to spend this life in 
getting more and more knowledge he wants to lead an adventurous life which is beneficial not for himself but for the um, um, but for the people to come but for uh, the years to come thank you all and uh, the remaining poem we will discuss again in the next part